Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves, featuring conversations with special guests on topics related but not limited to burnout, mindset, fulfillment, transitions, wellness, and so much more. I am your host, Jessica Locke, Astrala Yoga Guide and Holistic Wellness Coach. And this podcast is not about telling you what to do. I believe we all have the answers we need within. This podcast is here to inspire you, help you find clarity, and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. And of course, we'll be sharing tools and strategies from our guests to embrace your inner wisdom and live unleashed. Ready to dive in? Hello, hello. Today's episode is with someone I've been following and learning from for years. Her name is Melissa Griffin. She's a former school teacher turned entrepreneur. Melissa leads a community of over 300,000 entrepreneurs and 25,000 students in her paid courses and mastermind program, where she helps conscious leaders create profitable, purpose-driven companies, as well as heal from the old mental programming and thought patterns that keep them from feeling aligned, whole, and fulfilled. I had the huge privilege of meeting Melissa when I joined her Bold Abundance Mastermind this year. And let me tell you, she is as warm and vibrant in person, well, Zoom, as she is in her videos and social media. She's been such an incredible guide in holding space for us to grow, expand, and heal. And this podcast wouldn't be here if it weren't for her and everyone in the mastermind. You are in for a treat. In today's episode, Melissa shares about her burnout and what she did during her six-month sabbatical on realigning her business to herself, practicing interconnection so you don't get lost in the noise, experimentation, taking the time to see what works and letting go of any attachment, on walking away from something quote-unquote successful but not serving her, on creating connected, honest, vulnerable communities where people can thrive, money mindset and self-worth, and so much more. I highlighted almost the entire episode as I was skimming through the transcript. This call was so nourishing for me, and I am so grateful I get to share Melissa's wisdom with you all. Let's dive in. You've been a tremendous guide for entrepreneurs for a couple of years now, and I've been following you thanks to Pinfinite Grove years ago. And I really appreciate how transparent and honest you are about your process from, you know, the inner and outers of your business to your own experience with burnout um, and, you know, taking a six month sabbatical in 2018. (laughs) Let's start with what you do now and what are some of the pieces that led you here? Yeah. So what I do now for my business. Mm hmm. My main focus is on helping leaders, entrepreneurs, and I like to think of creative free thinkers to help them liberate themselves from anything that's holding them back, especially emotionally, mentally, um, any of the things from their past that might be getting in the way of the types of transformation they want to create in the world today. So I do that through the mastermind program, which I know you're familiar with, Mm -hmm. um, and through some of my courses and some new ones that I'm going to be coming out with too. So yeah, just I, I really see the ways that we can get stuck because of old programming and old belief systems. And so I just love helping people remove those blocks so they can have and be whatever they want. And yeah, you're definitely doing that. <laughs> so what are some of the experiences that might have led you to go towards this direction? Yeah, so I I kind of just fell into my business a bunch of times. Like I initially started a web design studio and was just kind of like a, a fun thing that I did never expect to earn very much money. And then all of a sudden it became a business. So I kind of fell into doing that for a couple of years. And then I started teaching and creating online courses about what I was doing to grow my web design studio. And people were loving them and getting great results. So I sort of fell into creating courses about business and there was intention behind it, but there wasn't tremendous intention. It was like, I'm good at this. People are enjoying it and it's growing. So I'm, it wasn't even a thought. I'll just keep doing it. And then 
eventually I started to come to this point of burnout, as you mentioned earlier, and just feeling like I was, I was on the hamster wheel of life and not really knowing where I was going or why and why it mattered to me and what it lit me up about what I was doing. Uh, there were certain parts that I absolutely loved. I loved teaching community and being able to help people. But eventually I got to this point of just feeling like I'm doing all this work and it's not aligned with my purpose and it's also really burning me out. So I eventually got to a point of physical burnout where I was diagnosed with adrenal fatigue and thyroid problems and raging cortisol that was four times the normal amount. Um, and it was kind of a wake up call at that point of feeling like something has to change. Something needs to be realigned. Why do I keep choosing things that I've fallen into versus things that I consciously want to create? Uh, and so that was when I started this six month sabbatical. I knew that I needed, I knew that I needed time away both to heal physically, but also to figure out what I wanted, <laughs> figure out what I wanted to create, how I wanted to help people and what really mattered to me. And so around maybe 2016, this is before my burnout, but 2016, 2017, I got a lot more involved in like working with coaches and personal development and starting a coaching certification program. Uh, so it all kind of collided around the same time of realizing I needed the same kind of medicine that I was starting to get into helping other people with, which was the personal transformation and mindset work and all of that. Um, so yeah, it just kind of all came together of feeling like I was at this point of realigning myself and making a more conscious choice of how I wanted to run my business and help people uh, and coming to this point of burnout and uh, and kind of having to choose, being forced to choose something different. Right. And I think to add a bit of context, you were also at the height of your career. You were seeing a lot of growth with your business. It was expanding. I guess if we go a little bit further back, you started blogging as a hobby and then that led to, you know, just following your curiosity and then your business grew. And I think, was that close to the time that it was like hitting past a million, passing like any goals you've ever had? And then you also had this huge contrast of your body saying, this is not working for me, but my business is doing really well. How did yeah. you, yeah, how did you just kind of your thought process between I need to walk away from something like this? I think it it almost wasn't even a choice because I was at the point of physical burnout. So it was like, I literally just couldn't do anything differently. I was having breakdowns and just not physically able to work and be present. Um, so that was less of a choice. I actually, for maybe a couple of years prior to taking my sabbatical, I had been having these, these nudges of maybe this isn't the right path or maybe there's something off or you need to realign something. But like you said, my business was growing every single year uh, into the multi seven figures. And uh, that was hard to grapple with. It was like, mm -hmm. how do I leave this thing that's working so well? I mean, working so well, quote unquote, <laughs> working so well financially, I suppose, and helping a lot of people, but um, not working so well for me. And so I, I there's this, saying that the universe will like whisper in your ear and then if you don't listen then it'll give you a little nudge and if you don't listen then it will like derail you in some way and so oh, I, was, yeah. <laughs> I was getting all the nudges and whispers <laughs> and I wasn't listening to them so eventually I had to be derailed thankfully it wasn't anything worse but um yeah I, I ended up having to listen to that message and I think we all do I think we all get those whispers and nudges and moments of clarity. And it's really up to us to decide if we want to listen to those, those moments and whispers, or if we want to ignore them, knowing that they're going to keep coming back around over and over again. I think life is really a journey of alignment. And the sooner that we can choose it, the sooner that we can create the kind of life and success that actually matters to us versus having to go through the same lessons over and over again, the same pain, the same suffering. Yeah. So yeah, I don't, I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> you know. totally did. You totally did. I'm curious about for you, what were the nudges that you noticed? Cause it's different for everyone, but we might, yeah. How did the, those nudges showed up for you? 
Yeah. So it would be things like, like if I was launching a new program or relaunching a program, I would notice that I just wasn't as into it or I wasn't as into what I was teaching. Maybe previously I was teaching a topic that I felt lit up about. And then over time, I realized that I just wasn't as excited about it anymore. It wasn't lighting me up. Or we would do a launch for something that the previous launch had gone really well and was a financial money maker and just worked really well financially. And then next time I would launch it and I wouldn't feel in alignment with it, it wouldn't do as well. And those were all little signs to me of something's off here. And it's not just something's off, the program sucks, people don't like it. Uh, something was off in the way that I was showing up for it and the way that I was holding back the success of the programs unconsciously. It wasn't something I was doing consciously of, I want this launch to not go as well. Um, but it was, yeah, it was something where I just wasn't being as present with my community. I wasn't talking about the things that would have made more sales for a program or something like that. Um, I would skip out on masterminds. I, I've been a part of a lot of masterminds myself and would notice that I would skip retreats or I just wouldn't want to go to a coaching call because I didn't want to talk about business anymore because I was just getting to this point of, uh, yeah, just feeling like a lot of the things I was doing weren't aligned anymore. So there were a lot of little nudges <laughs> along the way. Those are a few. Um, but yeah, yeah eventually just having to listen to those. You brought up mindset. Was that something that you weren't aware of as you grew your business or it's something that kind of just, you realize you had to face or, you know, those little mindset blocks? <laughs> yeah, I mean, in some capacity, I feel like mindset work and healing work has always been a part of my life. I started going to therapy when I was in high school um, went again in college and post-college and, and all of that. But uh, my experience with therapy has been different than my experience working with coaches and healers. So I started maybe in 2015, roughly, I started working more with healers and people who did alternative types of coaching or therapy. And that really started my own journey of feeling like, oh, I can actually heal these things that are coming up, these triggers that I feel when somebody leaves a, a negative comment or when uh, a boyfriend or something didn't text me for the whole day or, or just those little moments that could, uh, if you haven't done any work or healing or awareness around them, can kind of trigger or derail you. I noticed those things and I, I knew because I was starting to talk to people and, and see online and work with coaches, I knew that it was actually possible to remove those blocks to feel more peace and joy and, and also to be my biggest self. That was something that uh, was a theme for me throughout my life of feeling like I needed to dim a part of myself to make other people comfortable. And so I was just ready. I was at this point, I was in a relationship and noticing certain patterns coming up. Relationships are such a fantastic place to work on yourself. Um, and I was noticing these things. So I started to just work with different coaches and saw a lot of progress over time. And so that was really what led me into doing more mindset work because I was seeing the way that it was transforming my own life and my own business uh, and my clients' lives too, the way that I was able to show up for them differently and for my community and family differently. So yeah, that was, that was really the start of it all. <laughs> and then it just spiraled from there. It's fascinating because I think a lot of us, when we start our own business or any project in mind, we don't bring ourselves into the equation, like the mindset proportion of it. What are some common resistance you've noticed from entrepreneurs? Mm, about how they get in their own way? Yeah. Yeah. Um, some big ones that I notice are, you know, I think all humans have a, a deep longing to belong and anything that a human can do that risks that sense of belonging can make them feel really uncomfortable so that could be belonging to your family to your parents to your friend group so if you are an entrepreneur and you're thinking you're going to launch this business and you don't have anyone else in your family who's ever launched a business and they all are telling you you need to get a job that's secure 
then that can be a really big point of resistance. Or if you have all these friends, but they're living in more of a scarcity mindset and, and think people who have money are, are evil or bad, then that's going to be a block for you until you have awareness and can work through it because you're risking that belonging by starting a business that could become really profitable. So that's a big one is any sense of belonging that you feel like you might be losing. Uh, I see that come up a lot. And then also, and I would also equate that to a fear of success, but there's also the fear of failure that a lot of people have of, I'm going to do this thing or I'm going to try and it's going to fail miserably. Everyone's going to see me fail and I'm going to look stupid. And that's a really big one too, that we hold ourselves back because we think uh, preemptively that we are not going to be successful. And again, I think that goes back to the sense of belonging too, because we think if we fail, then people are going to see us fail and they're not going to like us anymore. And so that's, that's also a big one. There's a quote that I love that there's no failure, only feedback. I love that because really anytime you think you failed, anytime you didn't get the result you wanted, it's just feedback. It's just an opportunity to look at what didn't work and then pivot and realign and, and try something new. But, and most of us don't get it right on the very first time. <laughs> That's a myth created probably by Instagram, but uh, yeah, it, it takes time to figure out what works. So that's a big one as well. And then I think the last one that I'll share that I hear a lot is this fear that you're not good enough to have the results that you want, to create the things that you want, to make the kind of difference you want, that you need another course, another certification, uh, another book, another podcast, or to just not do it at all um, when there's something on your heart. But there's this deep sense in so many of us that we're not good enough to create the kind of life or business that we want to create. And the, the beauty of that is that pretty much everyone feels that at some point. And it's really, it's not a, um, it's not a death sentence that you really are just not good enough. It's actually just an opportunity to move through the fear so that you can start to get some results and witness how amazingly good you are, how enough you already are. Yeah, totally. I love where this is leading because one of the common questions that I see a lot of entrepreneurs, me included, when we first started out is, okay, I need another course. I need something to learn. What is the difference between seeking for inspiration to nurture your own voice versus getting too much? Because I think you've also shared about it, you know, the overwhelm of social media and everybody telling you what you need. And there are ways that it can support you, but at the risk of losing your own voice. So how do you balance that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is where having some self-connection comes into play because there's no perfect formula for how much is too much. Um, but I call it TMI, too much information. If you're getting too much information from the outside world, whether that is from Instagram, email newsletters, podcasts, books, coaches, parents, friends, partners, anybody, right? Any kind of input that you're getting, it, it really requires you to have some sense of connection to yourself to know when is my voice getting lost here? Because having input and information and being inspired by other people, those are all fantastic things. I think that's great. But there comes a point where you have so much input, so much inspiration, that you start to lose that connection to your own voice. And so I think that having some sort of daily practice, whether it's journaling, meditating, hypnosis, yoga, anything that can slow you down and connect you to yourself, that will really help you to understand when have you reached your limit or when are you getting close? And when is it time to go inside to actually integrate everything that you've consumed and learned so that you can figure out how do I uniquely want to artic articulate this? How do I uniquely want to share what I've learned? Um, because you can get in this spiral, of always thinking you need another course, another program, another something, another opinion. 
Um, but really, I think what we need even more than that is just to connect to ourselves because you have so much knowledge, so much, so many experiences that are sitting inside of you waiting to come out, waiting to be shared, waiting to be infused into your business. So how can you discover those and, and connect to those instead of always looking outside of yourself for the answers? Because there's so many answers that are already inside of you, but you just have to be a little bit more still in order to find them. What is, how does hypnosis work for finding stillness? <laughs> Yeah, so this is a practice that I've uh, recently started doing myself, uh, and I'm, I'm in this program to uh, be certified in doing it with clients as well, but it's hypnotherapy. Oh, you might hear my dog. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> you know, he has this, this cough that he's had, but um, anyways. <laughs> um, yeah, so hypnotherapy is a way to put you into a theta brainwave state where you are more calm more still, more receptive. And so uh, when you're in that state, it's a lot easier to reprogram the old stories and thoughts and behaviors and patterns that perhaps aren't serving you today. It's kind of like meditation where it really slows you down into that more receptive state. But instead of meditation where maybe you're doing it silently and uh, you're not listening to anything with hypnosis or hypnotherapy, you are listening to someone, or you could do it yourself, but you're listening to somebody who's guiding you through some sort of process that is meant to reprogram some of those feelings or behaviors or thoughts that are keeping you stuck. So um, yeah, I've been finding a lot of value in doing hypnotherapy sessions. The ones I do are, are through an app and they're about 20 minutes long, but I really enjoy them. <laughs> That's amazing. The importance of really slowing down and listening to our own voice. <laughs> so bringing it back to, I guess, your burnout, how was, how did you move through it? I guess that's the big question. Once you've faced with the reality, what did you do next? Yeah. So I, after I was diagnosed with all of those things and my doctor essentially said, you need to stop working. Like you need to take a break. I decided to follow his advice and, and try that. Um, and something I, I haven't mentioned yet is that throughout most of my life, pretty much since I was about 15, I was always the leader, the high achiever at school in my organizations that I was part of. I would always be the leader. And I was always the person who wanted to achieve the most. Uh, and that's because I learned pretty early on that if I achieve a lot, then people love me and I get praise and I get the accolades and my family loves me. And that felt like this sense of belonging, like we were talking about earlier. And so I associated doing and creating and building and achieving with belonging. Um, so when my doctor said, you need to stop doing all of the things that you've been doing, that was honestly, <laughs> one of the hardest moments of my entire life to feel like all of these things that have given me worth and value and belonging are suddenly being taken away. And so for the first few months of my sabbatical, I was doing healing. So I was working with healers and taking it easy basically to heal my body so that it could rest and come back to a place of, of center of homeostasis. Um, but after that, and, th and that part, by the way, was really hard <laughs> because I just felt, I felt like I needed to be doing something, creating something in order to be worthy. I was in a relationship at the time and he also worked from home. And so whenever he would walk in the room and I was just like sitting there doing nothing, watching TV, <laughs> you know, I, I always felt compelled to tell him like, I'm going to get up soon and I'm going to do something. I'm going to, I'm going to work on something. I'm going to plan my vision for my business. And uh, I remember at one point he said, you look so cute just sitting there. And it like hit me that I could be worthy without having to do anything at all. And so that became a big theme of my sabbatical. And, and it was one of the, the most healing experiences, that sabbatical, of my entire life to feel like I was rewiring this really big story that I had inside of myself. So the first few months were a lot of resting, a lot of doing nothing. 
And then the last three months were a lot more of just seeing where I felt nudged to go. What, what did I want to do? I was starting to feel more creative again and, and had more energy again. Uh, what did I want to do without the pressure of what I think I need to do or what would make money or anything like that? So I started getting into vegetable gardening. I started adopting some animals. I started to get back into my routines and practices of meditation and journaling and Reiki and all of those things. Um, and really just started doing things that felt good without the pressure of them needing to be anything, of them needing to grow into something big. And eventually that led me back to my business. And it took a little while to really integrate everything into my business. Maybe after I came back, I was still kind of like, I don't really know what I want to do. <laughs> I didn't. Afraid yeah. to fall back into your old patterns? Yes. I think I was afraid, especially because I hadn't found total clarity when I came back to my business. It was like, I know something needs to be different here, but I don't really know what I'm going to do that's different because I, I knew I needed to change some of my programs and and that type of thing. So I was a little nervous. Yeah. Um, and it took a little while to really integrate everything I had learned from that sabbatical, maybe even a year to feel like I wasn't so easily falling back into the routine of doing, doing, doing. Um, but yeah, it took a little while. But once I finally found it and figured out what it feels like to feel aligned and at peace, it it felt like, you know, you like put the glasses on and you take them off and you're like, oh, okay, I can't unsee this anymore. <laughs> it feels like a different way to live and this feels so much better. What does alignment feel with your business? It feels like liberation, like freedom, like there's no pressure to be anything except for exactly whoever I am in the moment. Um, it feels like relief. It feels fun. I think whenever I notice that I'm feeling pressure and it's not pressure to do something that I, I desperately want to do. Actually, anytime I feel pressure, <laughs> uh, even if it's something that I really love doing, it's probably a sign that I need to slow down. So Anytime I feel that, um, I know I'm probably out of alignment or I'm doing something for validation or approval and not for this deep sense of purpose. So I can feel the difference now between am I doing it because it's deeply rooted in who I am and it feels really good to do, or am I doing it because I think I should or because I said I was going to do it or because uh, I want these people to like or approve me. So, yeah. Yeah. It also leads to the perfect next question. You, you have this curious sense of experimenting. I've seen how you guide people and in your programs, and it's really about experimenting. Even if you fail, you definitely walk the walk from your graphic design shop to pivoting to courses and then doing, you know, having like a, I think it was like 70,000 people in a Facebook group. I think I was on it. I wasn't participating. And then you decided to close it down. And I think these decisions where you've built something and it's growing and it's doing well, but knowing that it doesn't serve you, knowing when to walk away, how, how is that skill honed? Like how, what is your inner dialogue to walk away from something that's working, but not serving you? That's such a great question. Um, you're familiar with human design, right? <laughs> because yeah. of you I just learned about it <laughs> oh fantastic okay well I'll give you a, a full answer but part of my answer will be that um, in human design my profile is three six and before you the age I think of 30 it's three three and the three is all about experimenting like you learn through throwing spaghetti at the wall and figuring out what you, what feels good and that has been the story of my entire life of just always experimenting, always wanting to try every single thing out there. <laughs> I'm also an Enneagram 7, so I just love being curious and trying things. So that's part of it, I think, of the three profile of just always wanting to experiment and try things. Um, and another part, I guess, is 
it's really hard for me to do something if I don't feel a hundred percent into it. I need to feel like something is deeply aligned. And for example, when I closed that Facebook group that you were talking about, it had 70,000 people in it and people were messaging me and they were like, why don't you just sell it? You could make so much money from selling this group. And uh, this is not a good business decision. And I just, I hope to never live my life based on what is a good business decision if it's something that doesn't feel aligned with my soul. Um, and I don't honestly know why I'm like that. <laughs> I think it's just hard for me to, to get behind something if it doesn't feel right. Even, even if it's like I have plans to go meet up with some friends and then suddenly I feel exhausted or I just really need to be alone. I will cancel and my friends know that it's with love and, and all of that. Um, and I'm, I'm loving about it, but even things like that, I, I really try to make a commitment to what my body needs and what I need in the moment. Um, yeah. So if you see me doing something, <laughs> chances are, you know, that I am super committed to it versus being kind of half in half out. Yeah. That's so important. I, I, yeah, I love it. Thank you. Knowing when to walk away and putting yourself first. Yeah. And even beyond putting yourself first, I think it's putting alignment first. Because if I had kept, I'm just going to use the Facebook group example. If I had kept that group, but it wasn't aligned, the way that I would run it, the way that I would, I would have led that group would not have been in the highest service of the people who are a part of it. Or if I was like going to meet up with friends and I was exhausted and introspective and not really in the mood to meet up with people, the way that I would have shown up wouldn't have been in service to the people that I was going to meet up with. So it is kind of like a, a self thing of if this is serving me, but at the same time, I think it's also in service to the people and community around me to live in my alignment so that I can bring the highest good to the people that I serve so that I can only focus my attention on the things that I know I can do an amazing job at and really impact the people around me. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm just trying to picture a world where everybody showed up like this. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> I, I think that's how so I joined your mastermind earlier this year, and I was thinking, what is so different about this gathering of people where it feels very present and authentic and no competition? And I was really trying to just, you know, put those pieces together because as an entrepreneur, I was on my own for a couple of years with no direction really and not having the energy around me to you know, to get inspired or to get feedback at all. Everything was happening in my own head. And I think for anybody, even anybody who's working at home, spending a lot of time in your own head can sometimes be dangerous, especially if you're spiraling. So what were some ways that your mastermind is different? How did you bring that group together? Hmm. Well, I would love to hear from you first. What feels different about it to you? I know you said there's no competition, which I'm so happy to hear that you feel that way. What else feels different to you or I good? I think everyone is very open. They're there as human beings. They're not there as in doing or showing off anything. And I've heard of a lot of similar groups like masterminds before and I think before yours I was thinking it's like oh it's about selling it's about making seven eight nine figures and that wasn't aligned to me maybe because I'm not I'm not oriented by numbers I'm more oriented by goals and people and we all have different businesses in this mastermind but we all show up for each other yeah I love that thank you for sharing that um, yeah, so some of the things that were important to me, because I've had other masterminds, I, I had done a mastermind, uh, I believe it started in 2017. And around that time, I was a lot more, I, I was a lot more uh, interested in the numbers and helping them scale and grow, which I 
is part of the mastermind now too, but it was more a part of it then. And there was still soulfulness and, and all of that in the previous mastermind, but it, it was a lot more about like, let's scale your business and a lot less yeah. about the deep inner work. And so having had that experience and also having been part of a lot of masterminds that were entirely focused on scaling and seven, eight figures and, and all of that, um, I just started to feel like there needs to be another way to grow businesses that isn't so focused on let's just have more and more. Because what's the point of more if you're miserable? What's the point of having more money and creating a bigger business if it doesn't feel good? If you are still feeling shitty all the time, if you're still getting in your own way, you're still upper limiting and creating fights with your partner and um, just all of these things that can derail you. So I started to envision a mastermind group that was just as focused on growing your business and thinking of the possibilities and finding ways to put your projects out there without the fear, but also so much a part of um, deep inner healing and mindset work. And I think that combination of having people be vulnerable and having them collaborate with their highest self and uh, understand the pieces of their patterning that are holding them back. I think having that as part of a mastermind program just inherently creates a space where people can see each other as humans instead of as just business people who are yeah. scaling all the time, right? And also because of that, people are being so open and honest about the things that are holding them back. So as you know, in our Slack channel where we all congregate and chat, we have our like wins channel where people will share their big wins that they've had with launches and all of the things. And we'll have other channels where they can ask business questions. And then we also have channels for daily gratitude where people can get vulnerable about the things that they feel grateful for. And we have channels for holding space for someone if they're going through something challenging or difficult. And I think just those little, those little things of creating a space where it's not all about how did you make 100K this month? <laughs> and it's also about what is challenging you in your life right now? How can we see you in the difficulty and, and also see you as your highest self along the way? Um, and our retreats too. I, I have the vision of those being primarily about the inner transformational work because I think that's what lasts. You can learn business strategies and those are fantastic and those can help you grow your business but you do them and they're done. But with mindset work and inner healing work, it's something that lasts for an entire lifetime. Once you've worked through some sort of programming or patterning, that is going to change your life forever. And it's going to improve your life and the results they are able to get. So I just see it as so important to creating really connected, honest, vulnerable communities where people can thrive. Yeah, thank you for creating that space. Really, I I didn't know I needed it. <laughs> I needed it so much, and it has enabled me to, I think, show up for myself, seeing how others mm. do it for themselves. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Oh. Um, when you were launched after your burnout and all the lessons and coming back to the business, you decided to relaunch your podcast as well from pursuit with purpose to limitless life. Um, what was the thinking behind it? Yeah. So I had stopped my podcast a little bit before my sabbatical. So it had been maybe a couple years. I'm trying to do the math in my head. I think it was almost a couple years that I had taken a break from the podcast um, and when I had originally started the podcast, there was mindset work and, and spirituality and healing in, in the people that I interviewed, but I wasn't yet at that place of deep alignment and inner connection when I had created Pursuit with Purpose. So it just felt right to me to rebrand it to something that felt like me in the moment now. So the word limitless just really speaks to me and the kind of work that I like to do with people because it really is about possibility. It's about seeing the possibility in yourself, in the people around you, in your business, in your life. And so Limitless Life is like this ode to the fact that anything is possible. And um, the sh there's a shift in content too. So it's 
now it's not just about interviewing people. It's also about having coaching calls with clients and uh, people in my community. So you can listen and kind of like be a fly on the wall. I have a coaching call that I'll do with someone. Um, and it has more of a, a mindset, personal growth, and sometimes spiritual focus to it too. So it felt, it felt like me to rebrand yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. And the more it feels like you, I think the more you attract people that are similar. Because I noticed you took your sabbatical, but I wasn't really aware of your transformation until recently. And now I'm like, whoa, what, what happened? Like something shifted and even like the energy is different. And I love the fact that you also share coaching calls because I've learned so much just from listening to other people going through similar circumstances, even though it might be completely different, but there might be like a moment of truth that I'm like, yes, I feel seen. I feel heard. And you guide them in such a gentle way. You don't tell them what to do. <laughs> and it, it's just, there's so much healing in that process without putting it in your face in a way. Yes, yes. Um, I think there's a quote from Galileo of all people who said, you can't teach anyone anything. You can only help them discover it within themselves. And I, I really resonate that, with that in terms of coaching. I feel like coaching is so little about telling people what to do and so much about helping people discover the answers within themselves that are already there. I think we already have the truths inside of us. It's like we're a vending machine and the truth is already <laughs> in there. But a lot of us, we just, you put your quarters in and the bag of chips doesn't come out. Like you just have trouble finding that truth. And so working with a coach can help you to just kind of pull it out a little bit more because it's already there. You already know the answers, but it can be so blocked by our conditioning, our programming, our belief systems. And so, yeah, I think coaching is really just helping people discover what already exists within, in, in my case, in kind of a gentle, loving way that holds space for the wholeness of someone. Is this one of the directions you're, you want to take your business towards? Yes, definitely. Yeah, I'm really committed to transformational work that helps people reconnect to themselves. I feel like that is my purpose. That's what I'm here for. Uh, it's been one of the biggest transformations of my own life too. And I've seen how much it served me and, and how much it served the clients I've worked with. So yes, I, I definitely see that as a big part of where my business is going. Yeah. Can you share a little bit of how that experience was for you in applying the mindset growth and yeah, working with a coach yourself? Yes. So, I mean, in the beginning it was, it was pretty hard <laughs> years ago when I started doing this work with coaches. Uh, it was hard because I, one of my coaches calls it awareness hell, where you are aware of all of the things that you get to work on. <laughs> You're aware of all your patterns. You're like, oh my gosh, that thing that I do that's not serving me started when I was like five and it's been with me this whole time and you're just so aware and it sucks because <laughs> you're aware, but you don't know how to shift those things. It feels, at least for me, it felt like it would never end. Like I'm aware of all these things, but can I really reprogram them? Can I really let them go? Um, and initially I wasn't seeing tons of results because it was just a process, right? It was things that I had been living for decades. And so I needed to remind myself that things that I've been living for so long will take time to shift. But eventually I started seeing some shifts. And I also think part of that was because I worked with a lot of different coaches. Um, I haven't really worked with a coach beyond a few months. I usually will work with somebody exclusively. And then I'll work with a coach that has some different way of coaching, all kind of in the same essence, but they'll use a different modality like hypnosis. That's a new one that I'm trying now. Um, and I think having that variety, and maybe that's also just the three in me of like, I was thinking of that. Like, is that a human design trait too? 
<laughs> that very well might be that maybe that doesn't work for everyone. But um, for me, it really worked because I got to see and experience so many different types of coaching. And I think that like filled in all the blanks for me. And eventually I started to see progress. And once I started to see progress, it's kind of like if you go to the gym and I think this is a great way to think about coaching and mindset work is like, if you do a few sessions, you're not going to see any results. But if you keep committed to it and you do it continuously and it's a part of your, your life, then eventually you will see progress. You just will. And when I started to see that progress, when I wasn't as triggered by something that used to derail me, when I could be in a relationship and feel at peace instead of always feeling uh, nervous or anxious, when I could be in my business and make choices from a place of alignment, even if it meant doing something that would earn less money or that would mean that I, I don't know, wouldn't get as much notoriety or something like that. And I could feel at peace with that. I would see all of that as, as pieces of progress. And so it just became this thing of like, how much more progress can I have? What other things um, are causing me suffering that I can let go of? And I think that's part of the beauty of doing this kind of work too, because you, your problems get better and better. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> you've had the same sort of pattern that you've been dealing with for a long time and it's not very fun. And then you deal with it and you work through it and you bring awareness and healing to it. And then it's gone, at least in most situations. It could pop up in other areas sometimes, but it's like pretty much gone, at least to the extent it was before. And so now you have this new thing that will pop up. And I think yeah. life is just this, this journey of growth and of, of, having better problems, having better, um, yeah, experiences that you get to work through and that it's never a point of like, I've arrived, you know, I've, I've worked through everything and now I'm Buddha. It's like, <laughs> you just get to keep working on things and it can be fun and you can bring curiosity to it instead of blame or guilt. Um, and you can just be like your own greatest experiment. That's true. Like having fun, even when you're working through something that might not be fun. I know one of the things that you're sharing a lot that I've recently learned about also is money mindset. How did you get into that? <laughs> How did I get into that? I think that was probably just something that, that popped up along the way and something I've gotten a lot of questions from people about. So I think that our money mindset is the same mindset that we have about our own self-worth. So for example, if you think money is hard to make and so you feel like you have to work really hard to make money, then you probably also have the belief that you have to work really hard to be valuable and loved. Um, if you think that people who have a lot of money are, are bad or evil, then you will also probably think that if you stand out too much or you are too big, then people will think you're bad or evil. So it's, it's really this correlation between how we feel about abundance um, and how we feel about ourselves. And that's the point of money mindset that really interests me because I'm so interested in self-worth and self-love and how to help people cultivate more of that. And if they can make more money and have more abundance, then why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> why not? Uh, why not? <laughs> Yeah. And I think abundance versus scarcity beyond even the financial aspects of it, it, it determines the, the worldview that we have, the way that we look at our lives. Because even if you're thinking about like, I don't know, something that has nothing to do with uh, finances, you can still have the feeling of I'm not good enough or there's, there's not enough um, or you can shift and see the gratitude and the beauty in life. You can see that there's always more. You can see that you are good enough. And so I think it's interesting and helpful because it's a lens beyond even finances. And so it can influence your entire life, including your finances and your bank account. Right. Yeah. So many good nuggets of wisdom that I'm absorbing. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so how does your schedule look like now after all the lessons that you've learned from your burnout? You know, it, it shifts a lot. I think that's also part of me is that I love variety. So 
Um, right now, I'm, I'm kind of on a sabbatical in November here. Uh, I'm still doing coaching and still working with the mastermind, but I'm taking a break from a lot of the other things that I was doing in my business just for this month because I'm, I'm at a point again where I want to find renewed clarity on some areas of my life and business. So that's feeling good right now. I've been doing a lot of practices to discover more of that clarity. But generally when I'm in my business, um, I'll be working on things like coaching, the podcast, um, writing. I love writing. I'm, I'm working on, I'm sort of working on a book. I'm getting there. <laughs> I was like yes. to ask you, is there a book coming soon? <laughs> Not soon, but eventually, yes. Eventually. Yeah. Um, and anything creative. I, I love doing anything that's creative. So whether that is thinking of new visions and ideas for the business or creating an Instagram post that feels really from the heart versus the pressure behind it, anything like that I love doing too. Yeah. How do you make space for yourself with everything you want to explore and areas in your business that needs to grow? I guess that's part of the alignment, but yeah. Yeah. Um, how do I explain this? I, definitely part of it is the team. So I think your business can only grow so far as the team that you've cultivated. Um, and for some people, they don't want to have a huge business and they, they don't need to have a big team or any team at all. So I think uh, asking that question of yourself too, of like, what do I really want? What feels aligned versus what I think I need to do or, or should I just keep growing and growing my business? Um, so yeah, that's a, that's something for me that I am answering too of, um, does all this stuff need to happen? Yes, it could earn us more money. Yes, we could have more clients and customers. But what actually feels aligned for me? Would it feel aligned for me to spend the day being creative, even if that means that we earn less this month or something like that? And I'm really coming to a place now of just being able to make those choices from an aligned place instead of a place of like, well, I'm just going to sacrifice my creativity and my own needs or the needs of the team to earn more money or to grow our email list or something like that. So yes, I don't remember actually what your question was, but I hope that answers it. It does. It does. Helping, I guess, find clarity on when to do things versus when to just be. And I think that is like you've shared throughout this podcast is just coming back to yourself slowing down and understanding what you need. And it might change. I love the experiment lens because I feel like life is so much more fun when you try to do things for the sake of it, even if it doesn't produce the results you anticipated, but to learn from it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and it's there's something to be said too of slowing down, connecting with yourself, discovering your truth, but then you also have to live it. You also have to be brave enough to make the choices to live in alignment because a lot of us know what our truth is deep down. We hear it, we get the whispers, but it's so damn hard to actually listen to it sometimes, to actually follow through. And so just giving yourself the courage to make those choices that might feel a little scary or that might feel like, holy crap, I'm going to have to change something big about my life or my business. And just trusting, trusting that you wouldn't have had the idea of what alignment feels like if you weren't meant for it. So trusting your path and knowing that if you are living in alignment, then only you're only go ever going to be on the right path. I got chills from that. Thank you, Melissa. <laughs> you're <Yes>. so welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to end this with some rapid fire questions. Ooh, What's that... the best compliment you've ever received? Oh my gosh. Well, I won't think very hard about my answers since I'm doing <laughs> rapid fire. But I anything... <laughs> you can take your time because I call it rapid fire because it's fun to think quick, but I don't want people to feel like, ah. <laughs> I like, I like it. it. That sounds fun. Um, okay. So the first one that came to mind is anytime somebody says that they can be themselves around me or that they feel seen around me, I love getting that compliment where somebody can feel whole in my presence a book that's changed your life 
Ooh, I love Cheryl Strayed's Tiny Beautiful Things. She, it's like an advice column where she just answers people's really painful questions in the most loving, big-hearted, wise kind of way. I think it's a beautiful book. I'll check it out. What does coming home to yourself mean? Oh, what a beautiful question. That gave me chills. <laughs> oh, coming home to myself. It means checking in with me before the outside world, living my truth, even when it's difficult, feeling at peace with who I am. What do you want more of? <sighs> oh my goodness. It's funny that I have to think so much about that one. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so blessed with the, the things, the life that I have. I think I want more right now of like concerts, <laughs> dancing yes. with people again. I definitely miss that. <laughs> yes. Advice for your younger self. Mm. Mm. That you are, are so worthy, that you belong that if you can just trust the path of your life, you will be so happy to see how it all unfolds. Where can people find you? <laughs> uh, you can go to my website, melissagriffin.com, and my name is spelled a little funny. It's M-E-L-Y-S-S-A-G-R-I-F-F-I-N.com. Um, I'm also on Instagram if you search for my name. And those are probably the best places to go to find me. What are your offers, programs? How can people get a piece of you? <laughs> yeah, well, I think the best place to start is with the podcast. So if you search on any podcast platforms for Limitless Life, you will find that. Um, I also, on my website, melissagriffin.com, I have a quiz to help you figure out what your money magnetism archetype is. So highly recommend doing that. That'll start to guide you on your money mindset journey. So that's at melissagriffin.com. And then I have courses. I have a mastermind. Those are all detailed on my website too. So go check those out. I think if you're listening to this, probably the best course to start with would be the confident creator, which is all about tapping into your most confident self, healing the patterns that are holding you back so that you can actually get started on a soul project, as I like to call it, that really matters to you. Yeah, I, I did the Confident Creator. It was, Ooh. again, so much mindset work that I didn't even know it was there. And it, I do feel very confident now to create. <laughs> Good. Yes. I mean, you launched this podcast. Freaking amazing. <laughs> yes. Thanks to you and all the support around. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. Thank you so much, Melissa, for joining me today. I appreciate you. I loved your questions. This was so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing up as you. Mm, thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. What was your takeaway from today's conversation? Let me know in the comments or review on iTunes. I would love to hear from you. Subscribe to get new episodes each week and visit wholeandunleashed.com for more information.